What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and we're gonna talk about some predictive slash uh, current events happening with graphics cards. We're always keeping our ear to the ground or the railroad track or whatever to try and listen for the changing tides. Yes, you put your ear to railroad tracks to listen to the ocean waves. Stop face palming. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah. I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free to play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. All right, so PC Gamer uh, recently put out an article, and I'll link it down below, or at least I'll try to remember to, where uh, it's kind of interesting. Some things were sort of spotted in China. And the reason why we're mentioning China is because that's obviously like a major tech hub of the entire world, and there's a lot of trends that are set there. They are also the uh, highest hash rate country in the entire world when it comes to Ethereum and other cryptocurrency mining. So there's a lot of things that kind of maybe lead to what the future could bring in the next few months uh, regarding by just paying attention to what's happening in China. So first and foremost, it was uncovered that major like cryptocurrency, I'm say cryptocurrency because they, they mine like every type of coin, right? If, you're, if you want to be profitable, you don't just mine the most expensive one, you mine all of them and you build miners based on that. And we're talking about mining farms that have hundreds if not thousands of graphics cards. What was recently uncovered on some like buy, sell, trade type pages that exist in China that a lot of these cryptocurrency miners are selling off their graphics cards. Now, not just selling them, but actually selling them for less than what they cost new. Now, that is the way typically it works, but obviously over the last year, we've had a very interesting market for all things, and that's not the way it's been working. If you can get your hands on one, it comes at a premium, even if it's used. But what they've noticed is that they're selling them off in bulk. Now, there's a couple of um, reasons why that might be. Now, this is all speculatory because no one's actually come out and trying to be like, here's why we're doing it. One, we talked about this earlier in the year, that not only is the US uh, IRS, or the Internal Revenue Surface, a surface? Yes, they, it's air to surface missile when it comes. Okay, anyway, moving on. The IRS is looking at getting their cut of the pie, or their piece of the pie, when it comes to the profits of uh, trading and mining cryptocurrencies. So. That put a lot of fear into people here in the US when it comes to the way that the blockchains work and getting payouts and that those companies have to go legit and make sure they're reporting those payouts to you and you gotta pay your capital gains and, and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of people in the US kind of went, all right, I'm done, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cash out. I think Phil even was one of those people that was like, I'm gonna take the money and buy something with it. And so that is the US market, but in China, they've been tightening their, their belt even tighter when it comes to wrangling in and regulating cryptocurrency. But obviously in a communist society, once the government gets involved in something, there's a lot of fears of the way the future is gonna go in that sort of, whatever the industry is. And that's taking place right now in cryptocurrency. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these farms now sell off these major amounts of graphics cards. It's uh, 3070s, RTX 3070s were spotted as low as 400 US dollars when you do the conversion. That's obviously less than, than new MSRP. However, does that mean if you live in China or, or you're, you live in that region, you should start buying those graphics cards? Well, I'd probably hold off because as the article also mentions, which is very important, these cards have spent their entire life at full temperature, full, I'm not gonna say full GPU mining because obviously if they're mining Ethereum that happens on the VRM, or excuse me, the VRAM, but the VRAM can also degrade as time goes on. They're very, very hot. They're in, sure, a single card mining isn't that hot, but when you put a 150 of them in a single rack, there's a lot of heat that builds up amongst them. So it doesn't mean you should go out and buy one of those cards. It just means this could be potential light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to what's coming in the future. Because if we start to see the demand sort of ease when it comes to Ethereum mining, and I'm mentioning Ethereum specifically because it's the most profitable GPU coin right now. Remember, Bitcoin has moved away from GPUs a long time ago. ASICs and other things got involved um, that made them more efficient and cost-effective than buying graphics cards and throwing them in a computer to try and make money. So when it comes to Ethereum mining, um, it, it start, we're starting to see the fall off of the demand when it comes to GPU. Now remember, Ethereum was just a contributing factor 
to the supply and demand issue that we've seen. Obviously, they're not making, well, they're making graphics cards as fast as they can. According to the brands I've talked to, both Nvidia and AMD, they're making more graphics cards than they ever have for any family in the past, but the demand is unprecedented, therefore it's more people wanting graphics cards than ever. And miners, Ethereum miners specifically, are a big chunk of the demand. Now, something else is happening too, where Ethereum, or whoever the founders of Ethereum are, have said that in the coming months, they're going to actually limit Ethereum mining on graphics cards, essentially making it not even a thing anymore. Now, we saw something like that similar, similar to that happen with Bitcoin, and I'm not gonna get into the specifics of it, but they call it proof of stake. And so, what, and if you follow cryptocurrency, then you already know what this means. If you wanna know what that means, go and look it up yourself. There's lots of articles talking about Ethereum and proof of stake because these are people that are projecting and they're looking at the future and they're trying to evolve and adapt prior to then getting left behind. If suddenly there's Ethereum updates in your graphics card find, finding marm, mining farm is suddenly left renderless. That is also going to lead to a major reduction in demand in graphics cards. Now there's something else that's also happening here where if we consider the gaming market, most people are not out there trying to buy four, five, six, 10, 15, 20, or 100 graphics cards. You know, you've got 10 individuals out there that are trying to finish their, their, their systems and they're missing graphics cards. Once you finally get your hands on one, whether it's because you won the new egg shuffle or you found one at MSRP somewhere or you were part of the EVGA Elite program or whatever programs are out there and exist, you got one. You determined the price they wanted for it was worth it to you, so you bought it. You have your card now, and that means you are no longer that singular demand in the supply and demand. So I think what's happening is we're starting to see like kind of a sprinkling of demand falling off the bottom of a big pile of demand. So if you imagine like a big rain cloud, every drop falling from that cloud is demand being basically alleviated from that cloud. So you, me, Whoever else is out there trying to get single cards are no longer contributing to that demand. And as time goes on and more people get their cards, the demand will start to alleviate. I think the problem is right now though, seeing these onesies, twosies, you know, when we're talking about millions of people right now trying to get graphics cards, and that might sound like a pretty outrageous number, but I've been, I've given, I've been given some non-public information, which I won't share details with, about how big the queues are for some of these, these, these graphics cards queues. Yes, they exceed a million. Now sure, it's not like, it's a different million people signed up for the New Egg Shuffle that signed up for the Elite program that signed up for, uh, there's a few others happening out there with like scan computers and stuff like that. It's not like they're a different group of people. They're probably the same group of people putting their, their number in as many hats as they can to try and get one. So you can kind of just take the highest number and say that's probably what it is and it won't exceed that. But as individual people get their cards and demand starts to alleviate slowly, eventually it will get caught back up. I know some of you are already going, yeah, but Jay, Ethereum is still higher than it was at the beginning of this year. At the beginning of this year, it was just over $700. It had a high of about $2,900 per coin, and right now it's, it's settled at around $2,100, and it's obviously going to go up and down throughout the day. That's still a lot of profit. So there's still gonna be a lot of people out there that are gonna be continuing to mine Ethereum on graphics cards, specific, at least until, like I said earlier, it moves on to a proof of stake and then you're using other methods at which uh, to, to mine the coin. It's still profitable. But what happens is eventually if it continues to fall, I mean like Bitcoin is, but Bitcoin's continuing to fall. I think it hit something as high as $70,000 a coin at some point last year and now it's down to about $34,000. That's a lot of money. And that's way more than it ever was back when it first started when people were you know, used, spending two Bitcoins on a pizza. Right? That's a very expensive pizza. That, that was that $1.140,000 pizza. But I digress. What I'm saying is that as long as Ethereum's payout is more profitable than the hardware and the electricity it takes to create it, people are gonna continue to do it. But obviously there's been a lot of debate about the, about the impact of mining farms on the world and the environment and the power draw and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of funny, you've gotten people now to start to, like Measure 24 in California, which is specifically about energy efficiency stuff. You got people running high sear air conditioners and HVACs now that are much more efficient. We got solar everywhere. We've got efficient windows and doors and we've done a really good job at reducing the, uh, the carbon footprint in terms of power draw. Then we have electric vehicles pulling power from everything. We've got mining farms that are way more power gluttonous than even air conditioners, old air conditioners and non-insulated homes are. So it's kind of like, hey, we're just whack a moling with problems. So as you get people getting involved with governments trying to make sure that things are staying clean and regulated and all that sort of stuff, that makes a lot of uncertainty. So that's why you're seeing this real volatile pricing 
happening with cryptocurrency mining. Cryptocurrency is here to stay. A lot of you right now are praying and hoping for a complete crash of the crypt crypto market and you can't wait for the day that all those people lose their homes and stuff because they were, they were stupid because you couldn't get your gaming graphics card. That's not gonna happen. It, realistically, it's here to stay. It's gonna continue to evolve. Um, it's a money-making tool. We've talked about it in the past. It's always gonna be around. It's just the future of it is kind of unsure as to exactly what that's gonna look like, which is why people are sort of freaking out. But this could potentially be a light at the end of the tunnel because remember TSMC and uh, Intel, I think even IBM and obviously Samsung are scaling up their production as fast as they can. They're looking at bringing on new facilities in 2022. That seemed like a long way away. We're more than halfway there now. If you think about how fast 2021 is going by, that's kind of scary. So we're gonna see this end and it's starting to look sooner rather than later, hopefully. As long as you can get Ethereum on its own ASIC type of deal, you can get uh, obviously more graphics cards being produced and every time somebody gets a card they've been waiting for, that's one less person that's clogging up the queue. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys this talking head piece about kind of what the future looks like. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link to the um, article down below for PC Gamer, that, which was the one that kind of brought this to my attention and I started kind of thinking and got my brain juices flowing out of my ear holes so that I could talk to you guys about it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.